Good. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Let's see. Yes, 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 yes. Good, man. We're going deep. Are we okay to go deep today? <clears throat> I've been preparing. We're going to go deep. All righty. Let's go. Love these sessions. Beautiful. Good. Okay. So just so we're clear, if you're new to the UIG, if you're new to this community, Mondays are reserved for a bit of a um, a bit of a zoomed out call. Getting us right. We are always the common denominator. Every time I have failed, it has be it has been because of me. I take full responsibility for that, and. I want to ensure that me, myself, I, the vehicle to creating the success we want is tuned. Put fairly simply, oversimplifying it, human beings are extremely complicated. So why do some people win and why do so many people lose? Why, are, why do some people just, everything they touch succeeds? And everyone else tries it and they can't do it. Why? It's, it's pissed me off for like 15 years because I've always been the guy who lost and I saw people winning. And I was like, okay, maybe it's not effort. It's not energy uh, expenditure. It's not the opportunity. It's not, it's not the alignment of the stars. Why are they winning in said opportunity and why am I not? Maybe I'm missing something. And that kind of started my journey. Uh, you could call it an obsession. All the books behind me are all about somewhat the same thing. And it's there's so many personal development, personal help books out there. And each book is giving you pieces of it, which is awesome because then we piece it all together. I think there's some fundamental concepts that remain true through and through. I also want to say that no one 30 minute live is going to solve that issue for us. No 20 minute session is going to give us all the answer. No one book is going to give us all the answer. Well, that's actually debatable. There are some books that have all the answers for you in one book, but the point is we're not all going to learn it and apply it all in 10 minutes and see incredible results. Michael actually kind of hit it on the head is I think self-awareness, self-concept and um, self-respect being an extension of that is probably a fundamental. And so many people are searching for the shiny objects, all those books back there. I did this, by the way. Looking for like the little secret sauce. When I can't get the fundamentals down. And that was the moment where I was like, oh, Lucas, screw all the other stuff. 99% of it is garbage. It's not even applicable to me if I can't get the foundations right. Who cares about the fancy workout if I can't control what I'm putting in my mouth? Who cares? And we can go deeper on that. Okay, why am I putting that in my mouth? Huh, self-awareness. Why at night at 7 o'clock do I get the munchies and I can't say no to it? Why? What am I hiding from? What's behind it? What am I not wanting to confront? Where are conversations that have to be had? We can keep going down that questioning process, which I love to do, by the way. If I have a self-destructive habit, I will just keep asking the questions. Huh, why do I do that? Okay, what's behind that? Oh, interesting. And what you find at first uh, typically hurts or it's something you don't want to look at, which is why getting help in the facilitation of it is sometimes helpful because someone can call you on your bullshit, basically. That said, Today, we're going to talk about a fundamental concept called frequency. We've talked about it a lot of times. I'm going to explain a bunch of different angles. And let's just see what comes out of this. We'll keep it fairly loose. Uh, we got about 20 minutes left. Let's see what comes from it. I have some fundamental concepts that I do my best. I'm human, so I F up all the time. But I do my best to stay in alignment with because I have the evidence that it yields results. And when I find something that works, I keep doing it. 
I'll experiment with other things to see, can I find something that works even better? But if I, and about eight years ago, I found this to be like my little secret sauce. I want my cup so full that it overflows into other people. I want high levels of energy and I want to be self-aware and be able to check in on what state I'm in. What's my frequency? There's a famous saying, I believe Abraham Hicks coined it first, but like uh, your frequency is what you frequently see. Let's talk about it. Let's share my screen and let's talk about it. There's a lot of things we got to dive into here. We talk about a lot of stuff, but we oftentimes don't understand what it actually even means. How many times have been like, oh yeah, that's sweet. And then I actually like thought about it. And I'm like, I don't even know what that word actually means. Hmm. Let's dive in. You guys ready? Let's go. All right. Sharing screen. Let's start with uh, Wikipedia here. Frequency. What is frequency? You can drop it in the chat. What is frequency? When you hear that word, what does that mean? Your frequency is what you frequently see. Okay, what do I frequently see? I can understand that. What is frequency? What is it? We can get scientific here. It's most often measured in a hertz. You know, it's the number of occurrences of a repeating event per unit of time. Something high frequency, we all know that wave. Who here slept through? I actually enjoyed physics, but many of y'all probably slept through physics class. I slept through every other class. High frequency, it's oscillating or it's occurring, repeating at a higher in this measurement hertz, although it doesn't have to be measured in terms of a hertz. And we don't need to get into the rest of this because it doesn't matter what the measurement is. All we need to understand is what you see here. This is a frequency. So a pendulum making 25 complete oscillations in 60 seconds is a frequency of 0.416 hertz. How that's the equation for that is not that important. Does that, can we wrap our heads around what is frequency? Yeah, David, Dr. Hawkins is something I've studied for probably eight years and I've reread those books a hundred times because I still find juice in each. Frequency, vibration, attraction, the laws of the universe, good. So yes, frequency is clear, good. And what we frequently see that's fairly clear too, but that's still kind of, if you actually zoom out and think about it, that's still kind of like, well, what does that actually mean? Okay. So if I'm, if I'm, if I'm moving at 25 complete oscillations in 60 seconds, is that what I'm going to see? I'm going to see everything like pendulum swinging. What does that actually mean? And this is where I think you can read a page out of any book or spiritual text or the Bible. You could probably reread that page for a year straight and still not get to the depth of it. That's what a good book does. There's probably, you could probably revisit it every day and still learn something. I think we live in an age where we just consume a ton and we're like, oh yeah, good, next, good, next, good, next. And we think we're getting smarter or we think we're gaining more knowledge, but really all of it is just fluff. Bruce Lee said it, didn't he? It's like, I'd rather, I fear the man who practices one punch 10,000 times than someone who can punch 10,000 different ways. Although I don't think that's even possible, but you get the point. I don't know if there's a thousand variations of a punch. I'm not a martial artist pro here, but you get the point. Good. Let's keep moving. So I wanted to touch on that frequency. Got it. Good. Scientifically, that's what we're talking about. I want to bring you to this quote here. Everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want, and you cannot help but get that reality. It could be no other way. This is not philosophy. This is physics. This is science. They can photograph this stuff. They can measure this stuff. Everything emits a frequency. Everything is made of energy. Now we're going into the quantum world. Quantum physics used to be a theory. Now it's measurable. This wouldn't be happening here without the world of quantum physics, without the world of quantum. This would not be happening here. Computers, cell phones, all of it. It's not philosophy. It's not theory anymore. It's science. So far, so good. Follow it along. David R. Hawkins. That's right. Yep. Good. Moving on. 
Uh, next, I want to talk about uh, a quick little thing of Joe Dispenza's work. I'm actually going to exit that, and we're going to talk about this. Joe Dispenza's work. I've been a really big fan of Joe Dispenza for quite a while. I attended uh, his week-long event, experienced things I never thought I'd experience. Don't talk about it often because people would think I'm super weird, but I'm talking about, you know, you guys can let me know if you want to hear some weird stuff. Um, you know, portals and links back to my childhood and some really cool stuff that happened in between. Uh, some other body experiences, et cetera. But the point is, if we look at, I just showed you those waves here. I took them off the screen now, but waves, frequency. If we look at um, David R. Hawkins' work, which closely mirrors um, um, oh, too many doctors here. Dr. Joe Dispenza obviously modeled a lot of his work on top of that when it came to the emotions. So the scale of emotions, here we go. Elevated emotions, bliss, freedom, love, operating at a very high frequency, oscillating here at whatever hurts it would oscillate at, measurable. Freedom, love, joy, appreciation, gratitude, will, power, control, anger, fear, guilt, shame, lower frequencies, slower frequencies, greater density, matter. If you think about this, a thought, this was a concept that blew my mind. So let's let's erase the right side of the screen here. And at the top, let's put a thought, an idea, super high frequency. The materialization of it into reality, it gets more and more dense because the thought of a cell phone is at a higher frequency than the actual physical representation of that thought, which is the cell phone here. Savvy? Jack Sparrow, savvy? So far, so good. When I started understanding that, whoa, to take an idea, a high frequency idea into physical reality, there's going to be some time involved because faster frequency, greater energy, slower frequency, greater density. I don't want to go too all over the place, but it's the same exact idea. So far, so good following along. This all makes sense, I promise. Good. You are the placebo. Bring on the weird. Let's go. We got the right crew in here. I love it. We got the right crew in here. So good. So good. And this will all be put into a practical approach here in a second, because I know all of this is still kind of like, okay, cool. Oh, sweet. I understand it. I'm, I'm enlightened. I'm, I get it. Yet our life is a mess. Nothing is working. And we're still like all effed up all over the place. Like, I don't care how much someone knows it's um, what results are we getting out of life? Are we moving in the direction that we say we want to move? Because that tells me how much someone actually knows. It's okay to be a student in the mess at first, but I've met a lot of people who've been, I, I, I know someone for over 12 years. They literally, knowledge-wise, would be experts at this. They haven't moved forward in their life and it causes them a lot of pain. And they're wondering, why am I not moving forward? It's the application of the information, which is why, you know, going to university and learning the theory of something is very different than actually being in the field with someone. That person in the field may not be able to articulate it as well, but they know it better. They might not know it as well as a textbook instructor could say it, but they know it because they can yield the result. We can... Talk about the exact instructions. I don't even know how you'd explain how to swing a hammer. You'd hold it here. You'd put this much pressure. You'd, you get the point. Or just like, go and do it a hundred times and you'll probably know how to swing a hammer. No theory needed. Just some, just some, a little bit of shepherding on how to swing a hammer properly. But most of us would probably intuitively eventually understand how to do it. So who cares about all this fundamentally? I just like having a base understanding so when things are showing up in my life, I had a wicked little um, um, thing pop up into my life that was such a deep part of my visualization for so long. And it just kind of popped up in my life today. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I've already seen this a thousand times. How did it, materi how did it materialize from an idea, a vision, high frequency, through into denser, 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 denser into my reality state, frequency, bam, done. So far, so good. I want to know kind of how it happens so I can keep repeating it, but you don't need to know how this happens. 
so many times something came into my life and I had no idea how it worked. I just know it worked. And so I kept doing what works because there are laws. I don't need to know how gravity works for me to stay stuck on this planet. But at some point you start asking the question, why am I getting these results? And what is actually happening behind the scenes? I'd like to understand it maybe so I can teach it or help other people with it. If you're not getting the result you want in life, yet you keep trying hard, it's also, I think, important to understand why that's happening so we can change something. That's all. You don't need to know any of this to create, manifest, live your dream life, drive results, make things happen. You don't need to know about gravity for gravity to work. It's laws. It's science. We don't need to know any of this. I'd rather someone just go do it and get results than know, know how it's done. But again, I'm just someone who's super curious and likes to know how it's done. So far, so good. Okay, we talked about chicken in there. Love it. Okay, moving on to a little more practical approach here. Uh, which one do I want to share next? Let's share this one next. Okay, I'm actually going to stop sharing and just bring this back into something I want to touch on. Super practical. No universe, God, religion, spiritual no angle to this, just super practical. Even if you believe we're born and we die and then it goes black and we're here for a short period of time on this planet to just F around, totally fair. I'm not gonna, uh, whatever paradigm you see the world from, I fully respect. But no matter what paradigm you see the world from, and I love asking that question, by the way, side note, when I'm hanging out with someone who's getting results that are different than mine. I don't really care like what is it you're doing because I know I won't be able to apply what they're doing without understanding how they see the world. And I love asking questions like, hey, you know, in this situation, how would you see the world? What's your view on something like this? And it's so interesting how people who are getting a different results literally see the world differently, a different paradigm. Blows my mind. And I'm like, okay, if I can see the world the same way, the rest takes care of itself. So I like to see the world in terms of, or an element that I see the world from. I'm not saying this is the right way. I'm just saying this is a way and it's worked for me. And when it no longer works for me, I'll upgrade it into something that works even better. That's all. That's all. It's not better, not worse. It's not a hierarchy. It's just a big experimentation. But no matter how you see the world. So am I, are we good so far? I know I'm moving really fast. I'm really passionate about this exact topic. If I could talk about this topic all day long and people would actually listen, I would just keep talking about it because to me, it's fundamental behind all of it. Good. Where was I? No matter how you see the world or, or whatever, could we all agree that when you are in a good mood, just imagine you're in a good mood. You wake up, you slept well, sun shining through the windowsill. For whatever reason, the first thought you thought on would, was a really good idea. Like, I don't know, you're inspired by something, you're just having a good day. And that goodness brings more goodness, and that goodness brings more goodness. And if you continue that throughout one day, really cool stuff happens. I remember back in the day when I was dating, and I mean, I still see like me and my I don't care if it's girlfriend, wife, I'm just really big on the dating. We're going on a date tonight. I'll keep doing that, but it's with one person. But when I was like, okay, I really want to attract someone into my life. I started realizing that when I was in a really high frequency state, a really good mood, people would react to me very differently than when I was in a negative mood, a bad mood. Different ideas and thoughts would pop up in my brain when I was in a bad mood. That would just lead to more bad mood. It was a downward spiral versus when I was having a good day. And this is by chance, I'm saying, I just started realizing that, hey, when I'm in a good mood, things are good. Things start working. I get new ideas. I make new business contacts. I meet women. I do this and that. It's just things are jiving. I'm good. I'm on top of the world. Yeah. And more brings more, brings more ideas, brings more confidence, brings more results until I hit a wall and by chance, I start the downward spiral. That's how I lived my life for most of my teens and 20s. And then I was like, well, what if I could control that a little bit more? What if I could like 
not not like spiritually bypass the bad stuff because because there is a um that's a topic for a different conversation but what if i could be in a good mood more often and that's where books like behind me start coming into play because now we're dealing with little tiny specifics we're not speaking generalities anymore now we're like oh what would work for me okay workout cold plunge you know get out in the sun do some push-ups keep whatever, whatever works for you, get a freaking nails done, whatever. You can tell I don't do my nails at all. All right, so, and it's a real bookshelf, Matthew, because this was such, I really believe that someone's pain turns into their purpose. I'm, I'm a really big believer in that. I felt so much pain through my early childhood, my high school, my teens, and up till about 28, I felt so much pain. I felt so alone, I felt, different than everyone around me. I couldn't relate to people. I had no friends. I felt like I was an alien. Like I saw the world differently than most people and I couldn't relate. And I felt lonely all the time. I felt depressed all the time. And I think when you, all of us have been through our own version of pain, when you start finding the answers, which is insatiable for me. I cannot stop. I wake up at 5.30 and guess what I do? I study and I read and I go to bed and I study and I read. And then I think, how could I turn this into something I can explain to other people to maybe better their lives? So yeah, I, I do read a lot and I study a lot because I'm always insatiably searching for answers of how can I create a better quality of life for myself and, 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 learn concepts that I like, what do I not know, which I know there's a lot I don't know. So yeah, it is a real bookshelf. It's a pain in the ass when you move though. But anyways, um, so I started asking the question, how can I feel better most of the time? Because if I can feel good for one day and, and things in my life start shifting, same bank account, same, same, same exact life situation. When I'm in a bad mood, it's like everything is horrible. The world is ending and I can't really move ahead. Nothing's working. When I'm in a good mood, same bank account, same credit card collection companies calling me, same bullshit. Because that was me in my mid-20s when I was starting a business, in debt all the time, juggling credit cards. But when I'm in a good mood, it didn't really bother me. New ideas came, new creative solutions. The problems came. It was like, let's go. And that's why I love this graphic here. And I'm so happy I found this today. The idea of a spiral. We've all done this. Oh, we get some bad news and then our mind starts spiraling us out of control. Maybe we're bored. This is a great example here. Maybe we're bored. And instead of asking the question, okay, how can I move into being content in this moment? Hopeful, optimistic, a positive expectation, enthusiastic, passion, joy, knowledge, empowerment, freedom, love. Just feel what that feels like. I'm already freaking stoked just saying those words. Instead of focusing on how do I start spiraling up, which is the harder path, by the way, because it takes conscious effort. I just stay unconscious or I stay lazy and I say, I'm bored. I'll just go eat a chocolate bar. And I eat a chocolate bar and now I'm like frustrated, irritated with myself. I'm like, why did I do that? Even if it's subconscious, I'm like, you're a piece of crap. Why'd you do that? I know better. I don't really like, I just gained five pounds. Life sucks. I don't know how to change it. I'm overwhelmed. I'm just disappointed with myself. And now I'm just start doubting everything. Then I remember I have all these bills and I'll start worrying about these bills. And I'm just like, frick, I don't know how I'm going to pay those. Well, job security. I turn on the TV. There's president, whomever is the president these days. I don't, I also don't even know. I feel it's all deep fakes. Um, they're saying employment is out of control and people are at negative savings rates and, oh, they get, oh. and then next thing you know, you're angry because freaking red and blue or whatever you guys Americans do, red and blue or Trump and Biden's or whatever it is, division. I'm angry at them. They're the enemy. They created this problem. They did. This is why I feel the way I feel. I'm going to get freaking revenge. I'm going to launch these campaigns. I'm going to shoot up the freaking block. Bad, bad, bad. And I'm just in fear, grief, depression. I'm powerless and I'm a victim. 
to all of life because everything's everyone else's fault. Why is this happening to me? Life sucks. Tell me. If you think that you can get any creative solutions out of the problems in your life when you are here, even if the opportunity is presented to you on a silver platter, you can't. We've all been here many times. To do anything is like impossible. You're done. You're in hell. If we want to talk heaven, hell, biblically, you're in hell. What is the way out? What is the way to heaven? What is the way to joy, to love, to oneness? Well, we have a choice. However we feel, we have a choice to ask different questions. This is on a practical level here. And there's different things we can do. And now again, we're getting into specifics, so I don't want to talk too far onto it, but I'm really big on my environment. There are certain things that put me in a high-frequency state, whether I want them to or not. Cars are one of them. When people tell me, ah, oh, you wasted your money on a fancy car, I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand I cannot help, but get up a few. I look this, but I don't have money. Okay. Some of the most, I was on a paddleboard yesterday or two days ago or something. And the sun came up and it was hitting my face and a fish jumped in the water. And I saw it kind of jump. And I had more joy than that car ever would bring. The simplest and the free things bring us a ton of joy. How can you place yourself in environments that also includes around people can mean things. Is your environment chaotic? Can you clean it up? Can you get out to nature, like whatever you have to do to, I'm really big on environment because I think that's the easiest one to do because you can help but get into a higher frequency state. But anywho, you can also ask different questions. I'm bored. I'm feeling bored. I just want to turn on Netflix or I want to eat a chocolate bar. Okay, maybe I'll move my body. I'll go for a walk. I'll feed the air and I'll, I'll just at least be content. Can I get to content? I think very quickly you will. I did this two days ago. I was kind of bored. I was kind of tired. We were sitting on the couch. We were about to turn the TV on. And I'm like, okay, let's go for a walk. Let's just move the body. Because I know where this leads to. Okay, content. And started talking about our vision. Where are we going? What are we building in life? Where do we want to be in five years? Okay, optimistic. Positive expectations. I'm enthusiastic. I'm like center for life. Within 15 minutes, I'm, my ass is off the couch. I'm in nature. I'm moving. And now all of a sudden, I'm enthusiastic and I'm passionate about something. Can't wait for the Monday call. Blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Do you think if you're in a state where you are passionately you know, connected to what you're doing, are you enthusiastic? Are you even just optimistic about what you could design in your life, whether it's a DeFi portfolio or anything else you're trying to do? Do you think your chances of success in optimism? I caught myself in jealousy a few days ago. Um, and it's all about self-awareness too, but I caught myself in jealousy to someone I know. And I was like, whoa, 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 that is just one or two rungs away from grief and living in fear. I don't have what that person has. What are they, blah, 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 blah. I was like, yo, 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 hold up. What is it that I can appreciate about what they're doing? How are they showing me that there's a path that I could do the same? Let me look at some of their content. What are they talking about that maybe is just beyond my paradigm right now? Ooh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, now I'm optimistic. Now I'm enthusiastic. Now I'm passionate. We're transmuting. There's a universal law for that too, but we're transmuting the energy from jealousy, very low vibration, jealous, or it's a pit. We all know what jealousy feels like. It sucks. And we're transmuting it. How can we get this energy moving? How can we get it moving? People ask me all the time, how do you have so much energy? And it's well, you don't know. If you hung out with me, I do have days where I'm like, dude, I'm so tired. But the point is, how do I move my energy? How do I move it up? And that's the practical. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to look at, but it's really the same thing. This was a great little um, is uh, when I hear people say I'm tired all the time and I ask further questions, it's obvious to me very quick that they live somewhere in desire, fear, grief, apathy, guilt, shame, and it's depleting. When I talk to other high frequency, high energy individuals, although of course they're not like that all of the time, but most of the time they're in that, they're living in trust and hope and acceptance and understanding and love and gratitude and delight and enchantment, different words for all the same shit we've been talking about here. And it's no wonder to me that they're more energized. And guess what happens when you're an energetic, positive 
person on a mission, on a purpose, on a path, and you give to others and you fill other people's cups. Someone answer, what happens? You've experienced this. What happens? Yeah, I'll share all this stuff, um, Jamal. What happens when you're in that state? Just a few things in the comments. You're filling other people's cups. You're helping other people. You're inspiring them. Well, there's both a pro and con to that because you will have some crabs in a bucket try to bring you down. They're jealous of you. They're envious of you. But a lot of times you start making connections with other people. You start finding support. You start having people reach out and help. You feel better. You feel more energy. You're not so tired. You go to bed quicker. You sleep better because you don't have anxiety. You're sleeping because you're stoked for the next day. You can't wait to wake up in the morning. You're not hitting snooze five times. Even down on a fundamental screw all the spiritual stuff, you just have more energy to get shit done. Better ideas pop up because you just have more energy. We I mean, get as metaphysical as we want, but even screw all that. Who cares about all that? All Honestly, who cares about it all? Because it really doesn't matter how much you know on just a base level results in the 3d world what happens life seems to it does but it seems to just work better and i think you'll quickly find that you attract a lot of things into your life people because they're attracted to it it's high frequency individuals attract people to them it's inevitable And if we can understand, Wes says, life seems to just flow. That's so good. I 100% agree, and I think we've all experienced that. It's like, you know, you're not even trying that hard. It's just like working out. You're like, yo, this is sweet. This is easy. Uh, exactly like that visual. If it's too zoomed in, then we can't see where in that spiral we are. It's essential to zoom out. So good. Yeah, so good. Yeah, I do try to take time every day. Uh, this morning, I kind of woke up a little earlier and went down to the water. It was a little cold, but I went down to the water. I just want to zoom out and be like, hey, Lucas, where are you actually at? Okay, here's where I'm at. Okay, I can feel that. I feel it in my body. How do I move that energy? How do I get that energy moving? What are other, if I kind of wake up in a lower frequency state, which I do sometimes, I wake up and I'm like, F it, dude. I don't really want to do anything today. For whatever reason, I slept wrong, I didn't sleep well, I had bad dreams that I'm not aware of, like whatever happened, that's irrelevant. I wake up and I'm like, I don't really do anything. Oh, maybe I heard something on the radio as I was walking from someone else's house and it was just talking about how we're all effed. And somehow in my subconscious, that just stayed with me and went to sleep with it. I woke up and I'm like, life sucks. Okay, Lucas, you have a choice here. You have a choice. How can I start moving that energy? How can I start asking different questions? Well, what is good? Can I find one good thing? Can I find two? Can I find three? Can I get energy moving in my body? Can I get reconnected to what I'm doing here? Where am I going? And it takes work. It's so many people are just in the river of life and they're just floating. And wherever the river takes them, that's where they end up. And I'm like, it breaks my heart because they have a choice. It's not easy. Imagine if it was easy. Or kind of defeat the purpose, I think. But anyways, we have a choice. There's been so many times where at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm like, I'm really tired. I was just unconscious, probably from 10 to 2, just doing work, meetings, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm so tired. Lucas, hold up, hold up. Stop, stop, stop. Are you? What's in your head? What's in your brain? What thoughts? Have you? Man, last four hours, I've been kind of stressed, back-to-back -back calls. I just kind of feel like, ah, oh, I don't have freedom, I'm kind of restricted right now. Yeah, I gave up coffee, Daniel. I don't want to rely on stimulants anymore. Okay, get up and move for 15 minutes. See if you can move it. Move that energy. What's coming up? Oh, okay, that release felt good. Oh, I wasn't even aware of that. Boom, done. Next thing you know, I have energy. And I'm back in the game. I think we have such a limited view of what we're capable of. And we're just, and I'm not pointing fingers. I've been in that many times where like a week goes by and I haven't even like, I've just been kind of life, just in the river of life. I had mentors once and they had me set an 
this sounds very extreme, but it helped a lot. They had me set an alarm every hour of my day, my waking day. And every time the alarm went off, that was my five minutes where I'd stop, I'd breathe, I'd self-check in, where am I at? Oh, wow, okay. I wasn't even aware of that. Okay, back to it. Ring, ring, ring. Oh, where am I at? And eventually it just becomes kind of a habit of, where am I at? Ah, interesting. Oh, wow, I have some jealousy towards this person I wasn't even aware of. Okay, let me go for a walk, let this go. Because I promise you, if you hold on to that, by the end of the day, you're going to be drained and you're going to be in a competitive plane in a competitive state and nothing good comes from that. Oh, I feel like I'm just not far enough. I'm comparing myself. Comparison is a thief of all joy. Wow, I wasn't even aware of that. I'm literally comparing myself to that person. Let me slow down. Okay. Yeah, let's go, Maria. We have a choice. Always. And I think that's one of the most empowering things about being human. Was today's session helpful? Any one thing land, do let me know. I will post the replay. I'll post all those charts. I know it's a lot. But practically, I think we can all agree that practically it's like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And now I understand why. And now the specifics, however you decide to do it, what time you wake up, what you do for your morning routine, when do you go walk, how do you work out, what kind of workout do you do? I think fundamentally clean food is a really, really big one. Like you can't argue, you can't give me one argument about against clean food, whole foods. Uh, you can give me a lot of arguments around different diets and that's very specific to the individual, but just clean foods, whole foods, books and media that actually fills your cup instead of depletes it. How are we feeling after today's call? Do we feel like a little higher frequency? And it's okay if you don't, but for those who do, do you feel a little higher frequency than you did before this call started? Better, yes, good, yes. Good. What if you filled your days, not with Netflix, but with content like this? It doesn't have to be for me. It can be a book by David R. Hawkins, a chapter or two. I'm not saying, I'm not making TV bad. We can't always be hyperproductive. That's not what I'm getting at. But all I'm saying is, if in 30 minutes here, I'm getting, hey, I feel better, or hey, I feel this makes my week. My week always goes differently if I miss this call. There you go. And what if you habitually set up things in your week that just brought you into higher frequency states? The music we listen to. Are we going to listen to kill them, shoot that person, F the police, and, you know, I'm the best I'm the best and everyone sucks music. That's good for the ego here and there. Maybe you're getting a workout in, you're hitting a PR, let's go. Or we're living, listening to that. Like maybe there's a better frequency of radio we could tune into to fill our minds with. What about movies and TV series? Are we unconsciously sitting there at, at the end of the day just to numb ourselves? Or are we consciously sitting down and be like, hey, I really just enjoy this show, so I'm going to watch it? because I'm consciously enjoying it, or are we just subconsciously numbing ourselves? What are we consuming? Gaia Network, dude, so good. We When we do want to watch some TV, it's usually Gaia. I'm not going to lie to you. There's some crazy shit on there. Um, people around you. Is it time to let some people go? Have that conversation. It's better for both of you to do so. Garbage in, garbage out. Donald said it better than I did. Um, I'm on a really extreme version of that right now to the point where it's like I was challenged by someone, but just like, I mean, that's why the quick coffee 10, 11, 12 days ago. Um, quit a lot of things, quit some types of foods. Just a very extreme version in this season of my life of Garbage in, garbage out, filtering everything and everyone that is not good for me at a very extreme degree. And it's only been 10, 11, 12 days and I already see a massive uh, shift, massive shift. And I already thought I had a massive shift. I thought I was doing pretty good. Nowhere near what I could have been, which just, again, brings to light how limited perspective of our real true potential we actually have for ourselves. Sometimes it takes someone else saying, Hey, you're doing good. Most people would say you're doing good. 
most people would probably say, hey, like, you're, you're the man. But you're probably at 1%. Ah, okay, that's what I needed. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Good. Good. I work in the garden with Audible. Man, working with your hands in the dirt, there is something spiritual about that. So good. Joe, Joe Dispenza has a TV show. Huh? I didn't know he had his TV show. Cool. Oh, that's sweet, Dante. 20 episodes. I'm going to have to check that out. Are you the smartest in your circle? I oftentimes feel like I'm the freaking dumbest in my circle. I love that. Good. I had to distance myself from a few good people with a lot of negative energy. It's insane. Um, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now, there is a difference. I'll just keep it one last thing. There is a difference between, and I'm learning this, but there's a difference between this toxic positivity without looking at reality and where we're actually at and exploring. Uh, you guys, you could Google the law of polarity if you want, one of the universal laws, but that one really speaks to me of like, there's, there's a spectrum. And if we're not willing to go here on the, on the, on the dark, on the negative side of the spectrum, we'll never be able to experience what there is to experience here. And so, you know, it's not to just like, Oh, everything is good. It's like, no, 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 no. You know, in the overall picture, everything is good, but like, let's actually like, let's look at the mirror and let's look at some hard truths and let's, get to the root of them and let's explore them because th that is the only way that the other side of the equation becomes possible. That's why most people numb themselves and they're just in the middle all of the time. They're not willing to do, do, do frequency. So we're talking about today. They get so slow down in the middle that there's no room. Uh, the very low frequency states but as we start exploring the spectrum of life, we get into a higher frequency state. That's a, I can see it in my head. I've never explained it quite that way, but that makes sense to me. I'll have to draw out a visual. But anywho. Yeah, it was said that you were the sum of the five people you're around most of the time. What's really cool with the internet is that can also doesn't have to be in their physical presence, which is pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. Again, I kind of ask the question, do we feel a little bit better, a little more hopeful after listening to some bearded dude who doesn't always articulate things the best? I'm definitely not the best at explaining this. What if you consumed content around these kind of topics once or twice a day? Whether that's for me on a Monday call or from anyone else out there, there's people who have studied this for decades more than I have. Would we potentially environment and you will be the people you surround yourself around with, which is why I'm so huge on community and so big on uh, this community too. Let's move that energy up instead of stuffing it down. And if you're like, Lucas, I know that kind of sounds all nice and all that, but give me proof. Try it for 14 days. Um, with all of your heart, try it for 14 days. When you're at the coffee shop, buy the next two people coffee, not in the next one, go above and beyond, buy the next two people coffee, see how you feel, just see how you feel. Or dude, I literally don't have 90 cents to my name. Okay. You probably do, but you get the point. Well, just go do something kind. Turn off that crap music and listen to something better. Shut off the TV, rip it out the wall, put it in your basement, or give it to your neighbor and say, don't give this back to me for two weeks because I'm on some crazy sh stuff here. And instead, read a book, go to nature, walk. Try to eat whole foods, healthy foods. See what putting your body, go for a walk once or twice a day. Try the experiment for 14 days. And if your life isn't noticeably better, where you're like, whoa, I'm happier, I feel healthier more things are happening for me, I feel like there's some momentum being built, then you can call me a liar. And that's that. But if you wholeheartedly try it for 14 days, living in a high frequency state, 
catching yourself when you're not. Instead of getting busy with work because you're getting anxious, so you just need to get more done, you step out for 15 minutes, you get back into a high frequency state, ask different questions. And you do that for 14 days. Classical music is big for me too. Like if you're drinking diet pop or pop in general, like, come on. I still see when I'm in the grocery store, people are filling their carts with like Diet Coke and shit. I'm like, please, come on. How is that even legal? I don't even know. 14 days. Cut people out of your life that are dragging you down. And look in the mirror too. 14 days. And see where you're at on end of May. Let's just call it June 1st. And if your life isn't, I wouldn't even say like a little better. I'm saying like, whoa, there are some shifts happening here. Then you can call me a liar and you can, you can, you can blast about it all over the UIG and the internet saying, dude, these Monday mindset calls, they're all crap. It's all BS and, you know, it's all junk. Lucas is the biggest liar on the internet, and I will gladly take it if you wholeheartedly, with all of your effort, trying for 14 days straight, not 13 days, not six days, and you take two days off, 14 days straight. And if you get to day three and you fall off and you go into a spiral of negativity and you eat chocolate and you cuss someone out and you lose control, you got to restart your 14 days, 14 days straight. Your life will improve you may not even know the level your life can improve to. You don't know. You can meet the right person in the right state where you're open-minded. You say yes to it. Next thing you know, in five days, you're in a whole different place. Whole new opportunity opens up to you. Or maybe it'll just be small. I just feel better. I'm sleeping better. I'm just more hopeful, enthusiastic. And I have a vision coming through of like what I need to do next. That's huge. All righty. All right. Good. I uh, appreciate your time. I, we, I, I will repost this replay. My W's, I have a hard time with my W's. I'm realizing when I talk, I like mix them up. I will repost this replay uh, with all the links to all the little articles we saw and some images. I'll let, feel free to have a conversation around it. I'm really leaning into this kind of work. Uh, lots has been on my heart for it because I still see people failing when they should be succeeding in areas of their life. And I'm like, you have the tools and the resources available to you. It's working for other people. It's time to look in the mirror. And I don't care if you're making $6 million in this group and you're like, oh, I already know all that. I challenge you look in the mirror because there is another level for you. Sometimes if you're doing really well, people aren't willing to challenge you on it because you're doing well. You must have it figured out. There's another level to you. Okay, if you're earning $10 billion, Elon, if Elon Musk is in this group, what's up, bro? Um, there's another level for you. Maybe, maybe it's not another business level, but there's a there's areas in your life that there's another level to. You're not beyond it. You're not above it. All righty. Good. Then with that said, yeah, I'll go give Elon a call and get on his um, get on him a little bit here. He needs a little level up. All right, good. And for me too, by the way, I am speaking to me as well. I want to make that really, really clear. I'm speaking to me just as much. Good. Elon Coin. <sighs> good. I really hope this just impacted even just one person. If it changes the trajectory, trajectory of your life, then this 45 minutes was well worth it. But I feel like um, I hope this was a good start to the week. And with that said, we will see you soon. Good, 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 good. Let's go. High frequency week, high frequency state, high frequency business people, men, women, high frequency investors, high frequency in life. And when you feel your frequency dropping, this is a little hack, um, go do something for someone else. Just try it. Just try it. Um, I've many times been in a restaurant, see someone eating alone, sitting alone. And I'm just like, as I'm paying my check, I'm like, yo, could you don't tell that person, but whatever they ordered, I got it covered and just leave in the restaurant. They'll never know it was me. They never know. But there's like, you cannot help but be in a higher frequency state or getting a coffee for someone. I don't care what it is. 
coffee is for peasants. I gave it up 10 days ago, so now I can make fun of everyone who drinks coffee. But um, it's like someone who quits smoking next day. They're just, you smoke, you're disgusting. Um, I'm definitely that guy. I do that all the time. Um, like I read a book and then to everyone else, I can't believe you've never read that book. I'm like, I just, I just read it yesterday. Um, when, in, when in doubt, go do something for someone else. I was at a sermon yesterday. I'll, I'll end my thought on this then. And they were talking about uh, tithing. And I understood it beyond the literal definition of tithing, of it's giving up your control to something greater. Doing something for someone else. Giving up something and giving something that is precious to you. For many people, that's money. And giving it, I don't care what it is to, to someone else. If you feel like you have no time, give your time to someone else. If you feel like you have no money, give your money to someone else. If you feel like you're tight on energy or whatever, um, give it to someone else. And you'll notice that your cup runneth over very quickly. I'm about to change the world. Let's go crypto, Don. That's the kind of energy we need here. Thank you for your leadership there. I'm about to change the world. That is difficult for people to admit and verbally state, and I know we're kind of anonymous here a little bit more, and it's not the same as like in person, but here's what I'm doing. Because the second you imply that and you state that and you make that commitment, you now run the risk of publicly failing. And people are, are really afraid of making those kind of declarations, but I think there's so much power in it. Let's go change the world. Let's go change the world. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm just going to scroll down, see who's here. Sean, what's up? Cyril, nice to see you. Dante, Holly. Good. Jamal. Oh, man. Justin, what's up? Justin knows what I'm talking about. Justin's a high-frequency dude. Maria. What's up? All right, good. I'm out of here. Thanks for hanging out. Let's go kill the week. And with that said, I'll see you soon.